Physics. Our universe is built with physics. You're physics. I'm physics. Everything is physics. So when making a video game, it wouldn't make sense to not have physics. Over time, game physics have changed, improved, and evolved. So let's go back to the very beginning of video game physics and watch these fundamental systems grow and eventually allow me to grab this guy's balls. The first major game to have some kind of physics was Pong. Ow, fuck. Now NASA may not have doo-dooed their britches when they saw these physics, seeing as how a thing just collides with another thing, but this was an important step. It laid the foundation for Collision, something that every single video game except for Big Rigs uses. Collision is when one thing hits another thing. In Pong's case, the ball hits the paddle and bounces diagonally away from it. If it doesn't, a point is scored. However, other things can happen on Collision, and it's often used to trigger something. Simple, but it worked, and from here game physics would evolve. For a while, things would advance slowly. Most arcade games were still pretty simple, but got a little goofier. For instance, Galaga had projectiles that fell more dynamically and Tempest rendered semi-3D graphics. Pinball was just straight up in real life. But the industry and game physics were flipped on their heads when Super Mario Bros dropped out of Miyamoto's bussy. On top of reviving the console market, Mario also had new and complex movement that relied on physics. This is one of the first games to use momentum calculations, and they are the reason Mario is so fun to control. Instead of Mario's sprite just having its position be transformed on input like other player characters, Mario had different forces applied to him, such as gravity and acceleration. This made movement more realistic and fluid. I mean, you could just change jump direction in midair, which is kind of fucked up, but you know, whatever. Eventually, games became 3D. Now this was important because real life is also 3D. Because of this, if you wanted your game to have good physics, you needed to consider a lot more shit. Mario 64 kept the momentum of the 2D games, but now Mario had access to a bunch of new moves that weren't applicable before, so collision and momentum had to be treated a little differently. Also, camera controls had to collide and no-clip with certain stuff. With 3D also came the addition of ragdolls. The first game to feature ragdolls was apparently this really shitty Windows game called Jurassic Park Trespasser, which I'd never heard of. This game apparently sucked mega ass, but it was also super ambitious. On top of introducing ragdolls, it had an advanced physics engine that dictated how things reacted to an object's weight, direction of contact, and speed. This game was way the fuck ahead of its time, and big thanks to Cutting Edge's video for bringing it to my attention. Around this time, games also started exploring destructible environments. This means being able to break and change the models around you, with debris reacting in a physically realistic way. And then, of course, Half-Life 2 dropped. Half-Life 2, and soon following, the Source engine in general were technical marvels. Physics became less of a cosmetic thing and more just a part of the gameplay. It had a lot of puzzles that relied on you manipulating your environment, combat with the gravity gun let you sling shit everywhere, and the world reacted to your every move. Other Source games had stuff like this too. Like, just tell me how the fuck Portal is even possible, like, as a game. Source's physics engine, Havoc, allowed games to be more realistic and also more fun. With the introduction of licensable engines like Havoc, more and more developers could add physics to their games. Eventually, they became mainstream. Advanced collision, destructible environments, interactable props, everything was on the table. They stopped being impressive. So where do you go from here? Well, allow me to explain something to the unwashed masses. In modern development, you can handle physics one of two ways. Rigid body or soft body. In game engines like Unity and Source, most physics rely on a system called rigid body. Adding a rigid body to a game object is basically applying a standard physics engine to that object, cookie cutter. Now this is great, and works just fine for most projects, but it does have its limitations. Rigidbody lacks some of the customization of softbody, and rigidbody objects have set shapes that can't change. On a softbody object, every single point can be interacted with and manipulated, and they can change shape. The drawback is that most softbodies are much harder to work with, but some games have done it. Boneworks, the name be Sam official coolest game, uses softbodies. I can grab this guy pretty much anywhere, or slide my hand up and down this baseball Sorry. bat, or kill this guy with this cinder block because of it. 
Every individual object has been accounted for and given individual properties. This weight ain't the same as this weight, and it's kind of incredible. I can't even really describe to you how Boneworks works because I just don't fucking know. Of course though, sometimes shit hits the fan and there's some jank. You know when you stack a bunch of shit on top of each other in Gmod and it kinda just- Yeah, janky physics is when something should work but kinda doesn't or just flips out like that. These are pretty funny but they can pull the game down if they're too frequent. The more complex physics get, the more jank they can have. Obviously fucking DuckTales for the NES isn't gonna have too much janky physics. But a game like Boneworks does, and it can get in the way sometimes. Despite that, game physics are one of the fundamental and most important parts of any game, and no game would really exist without them. From collision to momentum to ragdolls and engines, shit is pretty cool and honestly kind of incredible. Everyone loves graphics and gameplay and music, and obviously, I mean, no shit, that makes plenty of sense. But you can't play Fortnite without physics, and that's what really matters. But should games be judged solely by what's on the surface? Or should we peel back the layers of the onion of game design to reveal the real genius beneath Tupac?